So you've just been told your infant has low tone. And you're like, oh yeah, I totally get what low tone means. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it, totally, totally. My name is Kristen Flutter, let's talk tone. So what is tone? Well, think of tone as a tension setting of the muscles of your body. See, too much tone, or we're very rigid, or you can't move anything, it's held in place. This is known as hypertonia. But the other end of that spectrum is when we don't have enough tone and everything becomes really floppy and saggy. And this is known as hypotonia. It's when you see that really floppy, wibbly wobbly kind of baby kind of presentation. And actually, this is how a lot of babies first come out. See, when babies are first born, we don't have a lot of experience in fighting against gravity. So our muscles haven't really developed much at this point, but there still is a degree of resistance to what goes on. This is why we do tone tests to try and figure out how your baby's tone is. And that's why I always get intrigued when I hear about babies born with really strong necks. Ah, but my baby has a really strong neck. Oh really? Yeah, ever since they were born, you know, they were able to lift their head up off my chest. It was really, really good. They can always hold their head up. Really, really strong neck. So what if I told you that may actually indicate there is a bit of a problem going on here? See, think about it this way. Have you ever hurt your lower back? Have you ever hurt your neck? Have you ever had one of those situations where you've done something and you're like, oh gosh, oh jeepers, creepers, I can't, I can't. You guard by tightening up your muscles. You protect yourself by going into a bit of a muscle spasm. Could this actually be what's going on in some of these situations? See, if I've got a bit of a sore neck and sitting like this is the position that actually helps it, what does that look like? It looks like a baby who's holding their neck very, very strongly. Now, what about the other end of the spectrum? So this is looking at a kid who's actually holding their neck better than what they should. What about the kid who has possible low tone? So the way we check for a lot of low tone issues is by using a series of tests. Now we can do a whole bunch of tests. We can look at reflexes. We can use the infinib or neonib type of screening tools to look at your heel to ear, your popliteal angles, your scarf signs, all that kind of whatnot to see how Bob's coming along. But these take time. And what we like to do is do a quick screening test first. And this tool is actually, not tool, this test is actually utilized by a lot of health nurses and other healthcare practitioners. And what it's called is the pull to sit test. Now the way we do this one is with your baby laying on their back, we hold them by their hands and gently pull them up until they're in a seated position. Pull to sit. What we're looking for is to see how they respond to being pulled up. See, when a baby's first born, they have very little muscular control. So when I pull them up, I'd expect their heads to lag back a little bit. Now, in some situations, they might lag all the way back, but we expect to see a degree of neck control coming through at these early stages. By around three to four months of age, however, we'd expect the baby's head to be held in the same plane as their body as they're being seated up. Then from around five-ish months, they start to tuck their chin in a little bit and start to help with their arms as well. So they're pulling back against you in the process of being pulled to a seated position. Now, if we're not quite doing this or we're not quite at the right stages, now this could be either too young or too high, this could indicate that we've either got too low tone or too high tone for what's going on or for that particular age. Now this has some importance to it. See, this particular test, if you show up as being low tone on this test, this has actually been associated with being at an increased risk of developing conditions like autism or being on the spectrum, or being on the spectrum, being on the autistic spectrum of disorders. So we need to be doing these ones to have a look and see what is going on with your infant's tone. But this isn't a baby. What about older kids. What is something that we can do to look for tone problems in an older kid? Well, I love to utilize balance. See, we would expect a normal four to five year old to be able to stand on one foot for 10 seconds with their eyes closed. If they're unable to do this one, or if they've got a case of the wobbles going on, this may be a reflection of poor tone inside their body. And as such, there may be something going on that's setting that one off. So what could be going on? 
that could set some tone-based issues off? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, there's been recent research that's been looking at the way that our nervous system interacts from our spine to our brain and back down to our body again. Uh, this research put in place by, I believe it was Bernadette Murphy and Heidi Harvick was looking at how correction of dysfunctional joints inside our neck actually improves a person's tone. And it was recommended as a part of the conclusion that with people who are low tone to get these issues addressed as a part of their management. So if you've got a child who is ticking the boxes of concern in regards to being a little bit lower in tone and you're seeing like this pull to sit thing as a bit of an issue, then you're always welcome to have a chat with your healthcare practitioner find out if it's something worth addressing further and get some appropriate management for that child. If you have any other questions, you're more than welcome to shoot them through, but otherwise, speak to you again soon. Bye now.